Hi, this is Scott Milliken. I'm one of the developers for OpenDCIM, and today I'm going to walk you through one of the new features of version 23.01, which is the ability to use OpenID Connect identity providers for authentication to your OpenDCIM instance. As you can see on my screen here, I've got uh, a basic DSIM install, um, and it's actually a copy of the database and files from the demo uh, that is up on the main opendcim.org website. Uh, for the identity provider, we will be using Azure Active Directory, uh, which does have free subscriptions available uh, for testing, which I'm very grateful for, um, because I don't want to have to go through and set up everything myself. Uh, so we'll start at the very top of uh, Microsoft Azure. <clears throat> so as you get logged in, this is typically what you would see in the uh, Microsoft Azure portal and we're going to uh, specifically use Azure Active Directory so we'll come in here and we're going to create what is called an app registration so just along the menu here on the left hand side we're going to go into app registrations and you'll see I already have one created but instead of walking through that I'm going to actually create a new one so that you can see the entire process um, from start to finish so on the open DCIM side, we have to configure some pieces uh, that are going to correspond with what we get on the Azure AD side as well. So we're going to go into the edit configuration. And you'll notice that there's a new tab here called OIDC slash LDAP. So I've rearranged some of the um, things that used to be in SAML and they're now over here. Um, uh, used to be LDAP and SAML were together, if I recall correctly. Anyway, if you've used version 21.01, things have moved around just a little bit. Um, but this is the main area to configure the OIDC uh, information. So, the first thing that we need is the authorization endpoint. Now, it doesn't matter which application you're using, your endpoints are going to be the same for your entire um, subscription to Azure. So, the one that we want is this OpenID Connect Metadata document, but we actually don't want the document part there. We just want it all the way through the v2.0 because we're going to do a 2.0. Um, so you could either grab this or you could, well, yeah, that's really the easiest thing to do. So we're going to take it and we're going to paste it right here into the authorization endpoint. And then we're going to create our application. This is where things start to become unique to the application. I'm just going to name this one Demo. And for this particular instance, I'm only going to allow accounts that exist in my tenant or my subscription to Azure. Um, if you have Federation enabled so that maybe you know multiple um, subsidiaries of a, of a large corporation or whatever are, are federated, then you may want to choose one of the other options or if you want to um, if you, if you choose this one down here, then basically anybody, um, even somebody with an Xbox Live account, can log into it. <clears throat> Probably not what you'd want to do for OpenDSM, um, but uh, <coughs> I think most people are going to choose this uh, single tenant only. So we come down here, uh, we have to put in a redirect URI, and it's going to be a, a web application. And we're going to put in the base URL for our installation. And we're going to add on slash login underscore OIDC dot PHP. That is the destination that Azure AD is going to send the token to so that it can be consumed by OpenDSIM and it can then understand you know, who it is that's trying to log in to the application here. So we'll click register. It'll only take a couple of seconds. And we now have our application created. So this is the next piece that we need to copy over there is an application ID. So every application you create um, for OpenID, whether it's in Azure or in some other identity provider, is going to have an application ID or client ID that has to match up. So we're going to put that client ID right there. And then we're going to go on through the rest of the pieces of Azure here. So if you go into branding and properties, there's not really anything we need to change here, but this is where you could put a logo and some terms of service and privacy statement, etc. cetera, um, if you wanted to add that. Not really anything for us to have to worry about here. We're going to move on down to authentication. If you happened to 
Fat Finger, your URI uh, for the return, this is where you can go in and change it. You don't have to delete your application and start over. The other nice thing is, let's say you had a second installation, you could add another URI, you could call it uh, maybe your um, dsim-dev dot cadmuslabs.net slash login underscore oidc dot php. So you can actually have multiple URIs and have one definition that works for all of them. So that can that's that's kind of handy here. Um, that's not what we're going to use in this case, but I just wanted to demonstrate that that is an option, at least with Azure um, AD for their OpenID Connect. Um, the one thing that we do absolutely need to do on the authentication page is we need to select the type of token that we're going to be used by the authorization endpoint and that is an ID token. So check that, um, make sure that the, the box is checked for that and then let's save it. Alright, so that is saved. So now we're going to move on to the certificates and secrets. So in order for OpenID Connect to work, um, it has to well, basically, it encrypts uh, a token that gets sent uh, back and forth between Azure AD, your browser, and then your browser to uh, the application that you're trying to get to. So in order to understand the encryption, they have to pre-share a secret. Um, it could be a certificate, um, but in this case, the easiest is typically to use a secret. So we're going to add in a new secret, and we'll just call it demo, and I'm just going to go with the default um, six-month expiration on the secret. We'll add it, and now it shows this secret here, demo, and then that's the ID, which you can see at any point, and there's not really any, I don't, I'm not sure why you would necessarily need to have this hash here, but the value is something that is only shown when you initially create your secret. So once you leave the definition for this particular app registration, you will no longer be able to get this value. So it's important that you grab it as it is created, and we're going to put it in there under the client secret. Next up, we're going to go to our token configuration. We have to tell OpenID Connect, or we have to tell Azure AD what we actually want to send back. So we're going to add our claims, and it's a ID token type. And here are the various values that are in the, this is a default free Azure AD subscription. So it's just the default values that are already in there. So we're going to put the email, uh, family name, and the given name. And then a lot of times you would want to also put something like the UPN. Um, so if you were um, using an Active Directory domain that you initially started with, that would be your username rather than your email. So just for demonstration purposes, we'll go ahead and toss that in there. It's not required if all you're going to use is email. So, um, but we'll click add, and when you do that, it's going to ask, do you want to go ahead and add those permissions to the API area? And so, yes, we do, so that we don't have to go and add them ourselves later. <clears throat> so here are the different uh, attributes or claims that are going to be available in our OpenID Connect token. Email, family underscore name, given underscore name, and UPN. Next, we'll move on over to the API permissions, and you'll see that it added the ones that we had already, but we're going to add one more here because we are specifically looking for OpenID. So we're going to click on Microsoft Graph, and this is a delegated permission, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a grouped aggregate permission that will allow you to get to what you need to. So we're going to click the OpenID one here. Now, if you've got a whole lot of other stuff that's on here, what you can always do is you can type open ID into this little search window, click it, and then click add permissions. All right, so now we have that. There's one other thing that you have to know about, and that is admin consent required. So if the default um, for your organization is, you know, no, then um, it'll show here as a no. But you do actually have to consent for this application to be able to consume the information and an administrator of your subscription has to be the one that does it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click grant at grant admin con, uh, consent for open DCM test lab here and you'll see that everything has been granted. So um, that's just to allow the permissions and you know typically you'll see this when you 
uh, log in with, say, your Gmail or your Facebook um, into some third-party application, and it'll pop up the little consent message that says, hey, you're going to share your information with this, this other app. Are you sure you want to do that? So what this does is it just goes ahead and it says, well, as an admin, I'm going to go ahead and grant this for all the users that are within my tenant. Okay, so at this point, we have actually done everything that we need to on the Azure AD side, but we'll come back in a little bit and I'll show you how we can, can lock some things down even further. So, um, on the Open DSIM side, the user attribute that we're going to pull, we could either pull the UPN, if you take a look at the, these are the values, they're the, the claims that I've got, I can either do the UPN or the email, well, in my case, I actually want to do the email um, because I don't really have a UPN. It, it's the same thing um, <clears throat> because I, I didn't start with an Active Directory domain. Um, the other piece that I need to go to is my attribute mapping. And um, I have to tell it that the first name that goes into the user directory is actually the given underscore name. I have to spell it right here or type it correctly. And that matches up to the attribute that was listed here, given underscore name. And just like the last name, or is going to be family underscore name, or the LDAP version would have been SN or surname. So here we're going to put family underscore name. And then email, in LDAP, the default attribute is mail, and in Azure, it's email. So um, you just have to do the little uh, mapping so that you can tell what um, the commonality is you have to basically put in a dictionary to figure out how to get from point A to point B. Okay, so we've got those pieces done. We're going to go ahead and hit update. Now, before I actually flip the authentication over to OpenID Connect, um, like I said, this is the a copy of the demo, and there's only two users or one user really in the demo site, and that's DSIM. So um, that's not the name of the user or the email address of the user ID that I'm going to be authenticating as. Um, my Azure AD user is dsimadmin at opendsim.org, so I need to create a user for them. And we'll go ahead and just type in some information here, dsimadmin at opendcim.org, and we're going to give them enter, modify, contacts, and departments, which basically means that after I log in, I can go and give myself all the other permissions that I necessarily need. Um, now, you can also do group um, claims in your Azure AD token. That's a bit more advanced. That's for people who actually know Azure AD probably and OpenID Connect. I'm not going to get into that advanced uh, user case on a YouTube video um, just because it'll get way down into the weeds on everything. Um, but for basic authentication, this, this YouTube video will pretty much take care of you. All right. So I'm going to, uh, well, I'll go ahead and set just that one attribute. Okay, so off screen, I'm going to modify my configuration. I'm going to change my open DSIM off value from LDAP to OIDC. And, and yes, I understand you can't see this. And then I'm going to restart the containers that they are running under. And we'll give it just a few seconds because it has to start up the new container and then it has to um, get it going then it'll switch to the uh, new one. Alright, that's probably enough time. So if we come back here to the root of our installation, you'll see that it's going to bypass us over. If we were watching the network, we would see that it was sending us up to Azure and voila, we are now logged in as dsimadmin at opendsim.org. And you'll notice that I don't have full administrative rights anymore, but I do have user administration. So I can go in and I can see, ah, there's that admin one that I created. And I have the ability to go in and give myself whatever other rights that I need to have. So if I update that, and I go back home, now I've got the full set of menu items that I needed. So. I said that I would show you one other trick on how to do this. So right now the way we've configured it is everybody who is um, who has an account within my subscription uh, for Azure AD can log in. What if I wanted to limit it to certain people? 
So you go back into your Azure Active Directory, and we originally created an app registration for demo. Well, you won't find the way to restrict it in the app registration. You have to go into Enterprise Applications, and you'll notice it created a demo Enterprise application for me. I didn't have to do it. Um, so every app registration will get a corresponding Enterprise registration. So if we come in here to Demo, and we click on the Properties, it has this section right here, Is Assignment Required? And by default, you are not required to be assigned to the application in order to log in to the application. If I change this to Yes, and then save it, then only users and groups that are members of this particular group will be able to log in. So you'll notice my DCM admin is not a member of this group. So if I log out, and then I go back to, it'll say, oh, we can't sign you in. Your administrator has configured the application demo to block users unless they are specifically granted access to the application. The signed in user DSIM admin at OpenDSIM is blocked because they are not a direct member of the group with access. Okay, so if I now go in and add my user into the group, I've assigned them in. There they are. And I'll have to grab my password. And here we go. Now that I'm a member of the group, it'll actually let me in. So you got a couple different ways to do your behavior on here. All right, I hope this has been useful to you, and we'll see you on the next one.